All right. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> so here's the plan. I gotta pull up OBS. Hold on a second. Um, I think I can just click and drag that. Yep. Oh, that's a click and drag it in the wrong way. Here, video capture device. Here we go. What's up, guys? So I'm eating a oh boy. Eating a hot pocket. Try crisp and bun. I cooked it. I waited a while. It cooled down. I cooked it again in the microwave. It's not ideal. But those back pages. Eric, what's up? Sup? Typing that. Suppo. So, let's see here, where is the, where's OBS again? Here we go. It's probably going to make this stream look weird because it's doing display capture. You might end up with like a bunch of me everywhere, actually, I'm not really sure. Um, oh, okay, so I put me, myself in front. Okay, that's good. Check out this tight shirt, anti-quarantine quarantine club. Love this. Um, God, I gotta find that. That's a. Uh, oh, it's always hard to shout out everyone. Um, oh, it's gonna be difficult. Okay. No. So I am. Uh, I'm back on my stream. Ten twenty three. It came on live. I know yesterday I came on actually a little bit late. At um. Like 10.25. Today, came on right at 10.23, which is cool. Uh, tonight is actually going to be a pretty short stream because um, I've got a lot to do, but it's also like a lot of moving around. Uh, so I have an idea for tonight's stream. Every stream is going to be different. You tune in, you get something different. That's like, that's something that I like about this. Sorry, still eating Hot Pocket. Mm. Yo. Okay, so here's my idea for tonight. I want to, my Jackie Robinson card is live now, which is tight. Oh boy. Great of mine today got news from Tops and my Nolan Ryan finally shipped. Yes, my Nolan Ryan's also shipped, which is sick. I'm very excited because partially because I owe a bunch of signatures and have to ship a bunch of art uh, to other people, which is great. But yes, that's gonna be that's gonna be super tight. Um, can we see last night's canvas? I rolled up last night's canvas. And here's what I decided about last night's canvas, which I think is actually a really cool idea. The whole uh, splatter paint on cards, which is going to be sometime like, you know, I'll do a card break or a box break, open a bunch of cards, then the following day I will paint on a bunch of cards like we did last night. Super fun. And then um, those cards are going to end up into in different like... Uh, shipments to, as inserts, right, to other to people. I don't think I'm gonna sell those splatter painted cards. I've had a bunch of people hit me up trying to buy them, and as as humbling as that is, and as amazing as that is, I think it's pretty fun to like make them like really unique. And the only way that you can get them is either if you're tuning into a live stream, and I'm shipping them to you for free, which I still do have to do that for them form that you guys will be able to fill out or B uh, you order any of my cards basically any autograph card that anything that I'm shipping so I shipped out a couple of those cards today with different orders of people that ordered Don Mattingly original paintings or 
uh, had some someone that ordered some prints of some other of my work, and I put them in there with a little note. So I think that's super tight. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's the way to do it. I don't know. It's like it's tough, but making them free is fun because then when I'm making them, there's no attachment to it. As far as like me thinking oh, I better make these cool to make money. It's more just like, I'm just going to do whatever art I want to do, and then the people that are already supporting my art are just going to get them for free, and they will appreciate it, hopefully. So that's what I'm thinking on those. Um, can't wait for your signed Jackies to go live. Yeah, so the signed Jackies, I don't know. They're going to go live in probably like a week. I don't think it's going to be fat. I don't think it's going to be soon because... I still have a lot of, I have a couple Nolan Ryans, I think now there's four left, yesterday there were seven, so they're starting to get gobbled up, which is great, but I would prefer a situation where any given time, at any given time, there is one card that's available, and you can buy it or not buy it, and then that card sells out, and then there's a the next card available, and you can buy it or not buy it. So right now, I have like four Nolan Ryans left. And yes, I'm holding a Hot Pocket for those people that are still coming in. Um, you know, four Nolan Ryans left. And then Don Mattingly, I amped it up a lot. On Nolan Ryan, I had 70 cards, I think, total across all the different autograph sets. 70 cards available. And then Don Mattingly, I cranked it up to 200 cards. Now 200 is not a random number. That's because that is the maximum amount of cards that Tops will let me buy of my own cards at a discount. So I wanted to start maxing out every single card. So every single card from here forward, I'm gonna buy 200 of them. I've learned a lot from Don Mattingly. Like I don't know that I'll necessarily release 200 of them for sale right away as an autograph. I don't wanna do something where I release some cards autographed and people think oh this is cool this is a one of 50 and then they buy it and then like later I come out and say psych here's a different autograph color and this is one of 75 or one of 30 or whatever so like I'm trying to like play the balance of releasing buying the maximum first of all the first step which I will 100% do is buy the maximum number of cards tops will let me, which is 200. That's happening every time. But of those 200, how I divide that up and how I release that, that's a moving target right now. Uh, smash that like button and subscribe. Thank you, Eric, I appreciate that. I'm gonna smash this Hot Pocket and subscribe to that. Subscribe to a little ham and cheese. Um, what's up, Steve? Thank you for joining. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Jamie, appreciate your stuff. What type of screen you're using under your stencils? Mm. So it's not under. It's actually on top of my stencils. I'll go grab it. So when you see my stencils, hopefully, if you look closely, you're gonna see kind of this mesh pattern. I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope you can. It's mesh. It's sticky on one side, sticky on this side. Not super sticky, but a little bit sticky. And that is called fiber tape. Here we go. Mm, here we go. Fiber tape. Super crack stop. So this is actually made for patching giant holes in drywall. So if you are having a hell of a night and you decide to headbutt your way through the living room to the dining room, 
and then the next day you decide I, I got to fi fix that giant body size hole this is the kind of thing that you would go and buy that's what I use on my stencils it's cool because I cut my stencils out of paper I put the fiber tape on top and that gives it like a very kind of rigid layer so that the paper itself becomes uh, a little bit um, well I already said rigid but a little bit more resilient that's a good word resilient and on top of that it also gives like when I spray paint on top of it it gives that like checkered pattern which is very like signature to my work and part of the reason that I like that is because all of those tiny little squares that you see end up looking almost like pixels that you would see digitally but it's analog and it's done with real paint and so like to do something that is like digital style but doing it analog I just think is super fun well, more questions what's up Steve Pedro hello welcome back thank you so much hashtag hot plate fuck yeah Steve saw those puzzles on your site gonna pick up Jordan not sure what size I would go with the 2000 piece but I also uh, I've seen people that have done the thousand piece and they've sent me pictures along the way like the thousand piece is actually very 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 challenging so I'd say like either the 500 or the thousand would be a good spot to start depends on how much of a puzzle guy you are um, you definitely gonna release the auto Robinson cards though Yes, Tim, I'm definitely going to release. I will release auto cards of every single card that I make for Tops. I'm just trying to figure out the sweet spot of how many, like how to number the runs. There will be a one of one gold of everything. There are going to be a set of a series of five silver of everything. That's across the board. That's what's happening. Um, but I'm working on that. Like. To be honest, I still have my Nolan Nolan Ryan, my first card drop, one of one gold auto is available. And it's a thousand dollars. It's one of one. On pro athlete portraits dot excuse me. Pro athlete portraits dot com if you want that. Shout out that. But it hasn't sold yet. Somebody's going to steal on that. I know that it, somebody, when like I feel like I hit critical mass, somebody's going to buy that and they're going to go to eBay and they're going to sell it for like $2,000 or $5,000 or whatever. That's fine. And I wish, like, I want that to happen so bad, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, so in terms of the other colors, like if I look at, I did, I did different strategies for Nolan Ryan and for... Don Mattingly were different. Don Mattingly, the red series, is out of 99, costs 75 bucks each. Those ones are almost completely sold out. Meanwhile, I have some very much like shorter runs, like the teals of eight, where like, I don't know if any teals have sold. So I'm trying to figure it out, I'm trying to navigate it. Um, it's all, it's all working, uh, a work in progress. Um, Nolan Ryan was different because I only had like 70 cards to begin with so the top card or the top like run and I don't say top top's the wrong word the biggest run that I did was 34 and that was also red and those sold out the fastest uh, and those ones were $200 each and now I did like a, a run of 99 for Don Mattingly for $75 each because I'm trying to like test different price points and that one's almost sold out so like it's interesting that like no matter what the runs are people just want the cheapest I'm just fair but anyways let's see what else we got um, thanks for the insight on my thinking on the plan of releasing your copies you're welcome Kelspec uh, Yes, Eric, Team Hot Plate, Pedro, exactly. You guys were both in on it last night. You guys know what's up. I got some plates. Uh, I started consolidating my plates. Look at this. I'll show you guys one of the plates. Oh, boy. 
So here are a couple of the plates. So this is these are last night's plates, but I took a bunch of the plates and I stacked them on each other. So we have like a bunch of very cool stuff. And I started putting these into packages today for people that bought original paintings. And I put in a little handwritten note explaining to them. So if they don't know about the hot plate, now they're gonna know. Anyways, they're very cool. I love these and that is awesome. Uh, let's see here, more comments. We're just gonna do a little Q and A tonight, I think. I was gonna design a stencil, maybe I still will. We're just, we're gonna see, we're gonna see what we feel like. Tonight I'm drinking Heineken. Last night it was a, a different green colored can. I don't remember what it was called. It was like a foreign beer lager, but this is me tonight. All right, let's see. Uh, how's it going, Blake? What are you playing on tonight, Tony? What's up? Uh, honestly, Tony, I'm doing some Q and A stuff. I might end up designing a stencil for uh, another Jackie Robinson piece of art. So. I have a Jackie Robinson that is live right now on Tops.com. Tops.com also, as you probably know, released Bowman today, Bowman Series 1 or whatever you call it. They released a different series on the same day as my Jackie and it has crashed the site pretty much all day. So I talked about earlier how I'm buying 200 of all of my own cards. I buy them just like you guys. I'm fighting... Uh, a crashing site or a can't add to cart or a 503 error you know it is what it is so I haven't been able to buy my own card yet so that's challenging and um, so I'm not sure what I'm doing tonight besides a Q&A and, and a little bit of um, a little bit of beer drinking I guess uh, let's see here uh, Jimmy says any of the project 2020 getting a puzzle drop any chance we can get a 2000 piece puzzle okay so fuck I would love nothing more than doing a puzzle of some of my 2020 art that would be so much fun and I feel like tops could crush it they could sell puzzles and knock it out of the park I don't have the audience the tops does but I do have some diehards that are awesome like you guys so the short answer is no, I'm not going to put any 2020 art on puzzles because I'm not allowed to. However, uh, I've got a Jackie Robinson that's out right now. I want to do a different Jackie Robinson, totally different picture, totally different licensing that is not associated with tops. And either do that as limited edition prints, excuse me, or puzzles or anything like that. There's a lot that goes into that. So, first of all, I need to get in contact with Jackie Robinson's foundation and let them know, hey, this is what I want to do and I want to give some money to charity. It's the same thing that I did with Don Mattingly last drop. But this one just came up, crept up on me so fast because they basically told me yesterday that I was going to be dropping today for my Jackie. So I, I was like super unprepared. So maybe there'll be puzzles. It's not going to be the tops card. It could be a different card. Okay, let's see what else we got. I love that you guys are talking to each other also in the chat. That is, that's a dream. Uh, just dropped in. What's up, Jeff? Hello, hello, Dana. Uh, James Bond beer. Oh, does James does James Bond drink Heineken? Because that's awesome. The name site doesn't load. Tops. Top site doesn't load. That's my James Bond tops site doesn't load joke that I just made up. I think it's funny. Okay. Um, oh man, the vertical VA horizontal debate on is real on BO. Yeah. That's that's a fun thing to think about, and I would love your feedback. So, in the top series, I'm just trying to find some cards right now. These are not the tops cards. These are just random cards. Most cards are vertical. Portrait. Right? 
There's a couple cards in the cards that Tops gave us where the original card was horizontal like this. There's a lot of collectors that are doing different things with this set. Some collectors are collecting every single artist. So, for example, all of my works. And they're going to display that however they feel is comfort, however they feel is good. There's also some collectors that love players, right? Oh my god, I love, sorry, Willie Mays. I'm going to get all the Willie Mays cards. Well, the reference card was horizontal, and so most of the artists are going to do horizontal cards, probably all of them. But I was planning on making all of my cards, even if this was my reference card, I was going to do it in a horizontal or in a vertical way. And the reason was several reasons. I had a couple collectors ask me to do that, to say, hey, could you just make everything vertical? Because then when we display all the cards, it's going to make it cooler, easier, or whatever. Also, there's some people that are just going to collect a single artist. And so if they have all of my artworks, we'll just say here, and they're all, hor they're all vertical, like they're going to look nice together. But if 18 of mine are look, look like this, and then one of them looks like this, it's going to make it challenging to collect. Or not to collect. It's going to make it challenging to display. So I thought, I thought I came up with a great solution. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do all my cards vertical. Screw it. My set's going to look beautiful. And I'm appeasing a bunch of other people that want to like display everything together, blah, blah, blah. Well, I went to uh, blowout forums and I told people that was the plan. And I have a couple very adamant, very, very adamant people who said, no, don't do that. If you do it, it's going to screw up my whole set. Because I'm going to collect all the Mark McGuire's, for example. The Mark McGuire is actually vertical for the set. But for the purpose of this example... I'm going to collect all of these. And they're expecting 20 of these. Boom, 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 boom. So if they have 19 of these, and then they have one of mine that comes in that's like, boop, then I'm fucking shit up. So, I don't know. I mean, I want to make everyone happy. Uh, I want to make cool art. But I want to make everyone happy. Which I know is an impossible task. In anything that you do. Especially in art, but like in anything that you do, making everyone happy is just an impossible fucking task. So, I'm trying to figure out a good way, and I'm open to you guys' ideas. Alright, I'm going to read some more comments. Uh, you should do painting of those back pages. Yes. Uh, Eric, so Baseball Collector on YouTube is your username. Uh, Eric, hash, or aka those back pages, is amazing um, he's gonna get something very nice and uh, I guess we're just gonna leave it at that he's great I love him okay let's see here do a Blake team vertical yeah I know 20 car backlight backlit shadow box super sick Steve yes vertical see that's the thing like fuck man you guys vertical is awesome I would vote vertical if it were me, but I also, I do want to respect the collectors that say, I'm going to collect all the Sandy Koufaxes, and those are horizontal, and if I'm the one person to fuck that up, I don't know if I can live with that. I'm just trying to figure that out. Um, can someone drive the link to the puzzles in here? Uh, Steve mentioned Jordan 1, I'm not seeing the puzzles. Okay, I'm going to put that in. Now it's been a second. Blake's. Puzzles.com. There we go. Okay, so that's the one. Um, big wallets. Uh, I think it was just two or three people. Most people don't care. Nothing's ever perfect. I know. Hashtag vert. I feel that. I totally feel that. Uh, you're the artist. Yeah. I know, man. But as an artist... Part of my job is to make the collectors happy, and that's super important to me, especially in this situation where I'm coming in and 
I did used to collect cards, but I haven't for a long time, and I want to respect the people that are, that are doing it and are in the game right now. Like, those are my people. So I want to make as many of them happy as possible. And it, I know there's not going to be everyone, but as many as I can. That's the goal. Um, go with the all blade collectors. Yeah, that would be the all vertical thing. Uh, some will always be unhappy. Also true. <laughs> Cannot make everyone happy. Yes. Uh, maybe Tops will let you submit a vertical and horizontal version of the cards. Most buyers would buy both. Win-win. Yes. I would love... I mean, that would be sick. If I could do... If I could submit both versions and let Tops either release them both and just let people buy whatever they want. Like, man, how cool would it be if you went to buy like a Sandy Koufax card and you went and it's like, you want vertical or horizontal? That'd be amazing. But that's a moonshot, which is what we strive for. Uh, baseball collector, we all love Eric too. Yeah, Eric's the fucking best. Eric has been, from the beginning, like one of the best, uh, most supportive people is so cool sent me a video early of his um, explaining about his Gooden card that he has autographed and I just love like hearing the whole story and like the spontaneous series of events that led to him at an event where he's able to get that card signed which is such a special thing so that's really 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 cool um, Blake I think you should do whatever you like I prefer vertical yeah, so, I mean, that's the thing, Eugene, like, I mean, I guess I like vertical, but also, I, what I like is getting my art into more, is into getting my art into the most possible number of homes. So, it's, it's, uh, it's binary. I have to decide. I'm going to do one thing or I'm going to do the other thing, and there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. Is, which is not like normally something that I would say about art, but like there's one of them is going to sell more cards than the other. I don't know what that number is, or I don't know which choice that is. And so like that's like the challenging thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, not many as OCD as me. I say TV. All right, I'm vertical as well. Uh, Kofax Collector had hundreds of Kofax and Horse. Um, vert and horizontal cards. That's true. They do have a lot of those cards. Uh, Blake Collector should get a beautiful singular set. Also, excellent point. I mean, it's not my only priority, but that is a priority for sure. Uh, Robert, still be cool. Tops of Light, cement, multiple cards. Um, same player, they only print like 501 and the rest of the print. Yeah, if I could do a split. I mean, that would be the ideal situation, of course. If I could say, hey, Tops, the people want both. <laughs> so let's do both. Um, that would be really, really cool. But I don't know. I'm not, I'm not banking on that. Uh, print run would be high. I agree. Well, print run might be low, but low split twice, like double low, would merge together as high. Like two plus two is more than one kind of shit or no one plus one is more than two <laughs> shit hopefully you guys know tops is gonna tops that's right tops has been tops and hard today which is why i can't even order my own cards and i wanted some bowmans by the way if anybody in this stream has was able to get bowmans to flip if your plan is to flip i'm not gonna buy them if you're gonna open them do you think do you but if your plan is to flip them uh, DM me and just tell me what you're, what you're planning on selling them for, because chances are I would buy them. Um, I don't care about the direction. Cool. Have you started any of the horizontal cards yet? No, I haven't. I haven't even printed the stencils to cut for horizontals, and part of that is because. Well, it's a bunch of reasons. Part of it is because Tops gives me homework and says, okay, your next card's Jackie, your next card's Ricky, your next card's Trout, your next card's this. Uh, my Jackie Robinson that got moved up to today only happened because I had suggested saying Tops should release a Jackie for card number 42. 
like of course and I know like Mariano Rivera could have been at 42 as well which would have been sick and he was released with me which is awesome but um, that's the only reason that I got bumped up uh, on that besides that now I've been working on vertical cards partially because that's how I envision the cards and also partially because that's what tops gives me for homework uh, let's see is there a creative way to make them able to be displayed either way so that's a great question so here's this is this was a thought that I had and I'm gonna put this on blowout I think I, I need to make a mock-up in like Photoshop so like really people are like visual but here's I'm gonna I'm gonna float it for you guys imagine if if a set wasn't displayed horizontal or vertical wasn't displayed this way but it was 45 degrees all the cards boop, 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 boop. So we do that and then we can have this and it's like bricks almost right so it's like that where you're looking at it and you can see everything because everything is just 45 degrees and it's like that that was the idea I came up with today of, of a case that would make everything work and everyone happy or there's also a very prob very high probability that that would make uh, not everyone happy and like a bunch of people would be mad because they'd be like all of my cases are straight up and down and now you're throwing my whole man cave out of whack <sighs> which is true you would throw your man cave out of whack but also it could be it could be really cool so I've thought about doing that I've also talked I've been talking to some people about in terms of displaying like all of my 20 pieces making a custom case fits all my 20 cards and then and I I get that case and then I splatter paint on it and then I ship them out and they're like customized cases that are ready to put all my uh, stuff into that also has original like one of one artwork on and it could even be customized so like you know if you are a Yankees fan, I'll spray paint some pinstripes on it. Or if you are a Dodger fan, I'll like splatter paint some blue and white on it or whatever. I think that could be really cool. I think that it would be really hard to like pitch or sell someone on that idea unless they could see it. People are again super visual. So like I think I'm going to do a couple cases myself. I'm also buying all, obviously all my own cards. I'm buying all the cards, but like I'll buy all my own cards and then I'll put them in there and maybe splatter paint some like, I like weird ass crazy colors. So it would be like bright ass orange and pinks and funky bright colors. I don't know why that's just what I'm drawn to. Like Saved by the Bell, right? Saved by the Bell type of colors. Um, I think if I showed people that and said like, this is what's possible, then other people will be like, oh yeah, that is possible, that's awesome. So that's another option in terms of displays. And again, we're going back to like the vertical, horizontal, maybe diagonal, who knows. Let's see what we got. Uh, Eric Smith's fan, good by me. Eugene, let's fucking go, that's right. Two versions for tops, exactly. I don't know, I mean, that'd be sick. I uh, couldn't get Bowman first today. Yeah, me neither. Website was a mess. It's a bummer. So there's so much that goes into selling a card beyond just making the card. So I feel like I did, you know, I did the best that I possibly could on making that Jackie Robinson card. I delivered to them what I promised. But there's a bunch of other factors. Factors being, is the site working? And is Bowman released the same day? And also, you know, things like uh, what artist you're released with has had a big impact on the sales as well. Now, the Bowman thing, like, kind of throws a wrench in everyone's plan. Doesn't matter what else happens. Like, if people just can't physically order my card, then that's frustrating. But if it's a short print run for the Jackie number 42, of all the Jackies in the set, if mine is card number 42 and it's also like ends up being a low print run, that's not a bad thing for me because it, royalties are great. I'm, I'm super like, 
grateful to be part of it and get money for doing the things that I love. But like the up the backside of it is if I don't make a lot of royalties because I don't sell a lot of cards, then maybe my card is worth a bunch of money. So like you look at the Ermsey Trout, not very high print run, but if Ermsey owns, if he, if he capped out his contract and bought 200 of those, then the resale on that is really good. Way better, way better than what he got on the royalties or even what, even what anybody else, you know, like the Adam Thiel trout, those are going to be some sick royalties. But if Ermsey has 200 of his own cards, that's going to be more than Thiel's royalties, if that makes sense. So, so to me, I don't care. Like, it's a win win. I sell a lot of cards and I make some royalties, or I sell a low amount of cards and then my card's worth a bunch of money, and then the 200 cards that I own are worth more money, so the royalties are more irrelevant, if that makes sense. Um, can you pick your own order of the cards? No. Can't pick my own order at all. Tops gives me a pretty strict um, homework schedule, basically. I uh, love that case. Nice, thank you. Uh, indifferent. Can you make verticals? Yep, verticals would be easier to display together. Tim, thank you so much on the Jackie. I appreciate that. Hopefully you were able to uh, pick one up. I was not yet. Um, yep, Robert, I agree. I think uh, the runs might be less, but per the uh, reasons mentioned before, I I don't mind that. It doesn't really matter to me. Like I'm. I'm so grateful. I get to do what I love. I wake up every day and I get to paint pictures, which is insane to me. So that's cool. Uh, first trout came in at 2,900. Yep. When's my Ikaro going to be painted? I don't know yet. So I typically get six cards at a time saying, here are your next six due. And... I haven't gotten my second six yet. So I had my first six. Jackie Robinson actually wasn't part of my first six assigned, but I just liked, I don't know. I mean, the world works in weird ways. I just liked the card, and so I painted it because I felt like it, and then I submitted it just because I felt like it. And then, you know, here we are, 38 cards into the set, and I'm like, and I had already submitted the Jackie a long ass time ago and was like, hey, Jackie should be number 42. And that's it. Like, I wasn't thinking to get my card at 42. I was actually, I was literally thinking somebody else's card, somebody else's Jackie card should be 42 because I had just had a release last Thursday with my Dom Mattingly. And like, we're pretty strict or they're pretty like, um, it's a week and a half between each artist's release. So I was, there was never any part, even a fraction of a part in my mind to be like, oh, this is gonna be my Jackie. It was just like, Jackie should be 42. And then they hit me up and they said, hey, we're thinking about a change of schedule. How do you feel about bumping up and doing your Jackie is 42? Be Excuse me. Um, because it's card 42 and you've already submitted your jacket. So like it's weird, it, it's weird how it all works, but it wasn't intentional on my part. Uh, let's see here. Not questioning your artwork, but wondering how the spotter paint choices are coming to you. Um, and did you collect other sports when you were a kid? Okay. Uh, Eric, I'm going to do your question first because it's faster. Yes, I collected other sports as a kid. So it was funny because I lived in like, I lived in this little neighborhood in Sarasota, Florida, where it was very, um, there were no cars. It was like we would play in the streets and we would play sports in the streets and do, you know, do whatever, goof around. And in my neighborhood, we played whatever sport was on television. 
you know, like whatever was in season we played. So during basketball season, we were very into basketball. We had a court in our little community and we'd play basketball. And that was during like the Space Jam days. So we freaking loved Space Jam. And we'd get, we had like the cassette um, soundtrack and we put that in a little, you know, movable boom box and we put that by our basketball court and then we play basketball while listening to the Space Jam soundtrack. So, and then during hockey season, we'd play hockey in the street, street hockey. And during baseball season, we'd play baseball. And so, so on and so forth. And so during each of these seasons, like we, we, we just like moved with whatever was happening, we would also collect that. So I have a ton of uh, pretty awesome the era of basketball cards like and also within the friend group we each collected different players so I collected Michael Jordan's a lot I collected Shaquille O'Neal's a lot because we we're in Florida and Orlando Magic and Shaquille O'Neal was there at that time so like I have like a collection of those players but also we were like young kids so I wasn't buying anything rare I was just like we'd go to the card store and we would just buy whatever two dollar card we could afford that day uh, a good friend of mine jace collected uh dennis rodman's another friend collected scotty pippins and so it's funny like we all had our thing so yes we collected all different sports so i have a lot of i would say the most definitely the most baseball cards second most would be basketball and it would be like um early 90s early 90s bulls for me and then third is soccer, and I was a big MLS fan, and we we're in Florida, so like Tampa Bay Mutiny was my team. So I have a lot of uh, MLS cards, soccer cards as well. Um, that ended up taking longer than I thought. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Okay, Jimmy Mack, let me get to you now. Not questioning your artwork, but wondering how the splatter paint choices are coming to you. So I guess that depends on what do you mean the splatter paint choices. If you're talking about colors, I'm trying to stay true-ish to the original card. So the Jackie card that's out right now, I did that kind of reddish burgundy. That's strictly because the background of that card, the original card is red slash burgundy or whatever. With Nolan Ryan, where the back of the card was just a photograph of blurry version of the stands or whatever was behind him, it just that just didn't do that much for me. So I put in the orange, obviously because, or not obviously, uh, because Mets, right? So it could have either been blue or orange, and I chose orange because I wanted to make him like pop off the canvas more. If you look at the next uh, card that I'm doing, which is Ricky Henderson, I did a few versions. I painted. It, I actually did paint it live here on YouTube before I was starting to do these like regular schedule programs. I and I did two versions, and I did a yellow version and a green version, and that's because Oakland A is yellow and green colors. Now I'm kind of putting it to the vote of the internet to say which one is going to be the one that I print on the card. To me, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm excited to be doing what I'm doing. And like, if fans are all like, yellow, 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 then I'm gonna do yellow. I don't care, it doesn't matter if I like green better because if the fans like yellow better, I'm gonna do that. And vice versa, I could go either way. So in, in terms of like inspiring the background colors, it's like team based of what team they played for or true to the original card so like the Jackie Robinson was like the red okay Ryan has the Mets horns Ricky has the A's green yellow but for Mattingly and Robinson um, you didn't go with the Yankees blue or the Dodger blue true okay so that yeah so that's a good point so that's like that's a homage to the original card itself so if you look at like the Don Mattingly great example the card itself has it's the dual portrait, and I could I could go get one, but I guess I won't. It has the dual portrait. Ah, oh, screw it. I'm gonna get it. Just it's gonna be easier to explain.
Okay, the original Don Mattingly card. Obviously, like the uh, the I don't know landscape, true to earth, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Like this is like the real life shit, and then this is the orange background. On my card, I flipped it, so I put this up here and made it big, and I put this down here and made it small. I get to grab one other thing for you. So, in doing so, I was taking this, this image, which has the orange, and I was making it as big as possible. And, you know, if you see on my card, it's got kind of a rough edge on this side where it's like splatter painted. Uh, that's like kind of part of my style. That's what I'm, one of the things that I'm bringing to the project is my like, I don't know, urban, street art, messy, whatever the fuck you want to call it, style. That's what I bring. So we have this orange thing. That's already like committed. And that's only because I'm sticking true to the card of this. But then with this part, it has all these different colors. I made several different versions online. I'll show you. So here's one. Here's another. So they're similar, but different also. Because you can never paint the same thing twice exactly. Here's one, this is kind of drippy. Drippy, trippy. And then this one. This is the one that ended up getting voted by the internet. But, um, so I made all four of those and then I just put it up to a vote. I put it on blowout forums. I put it on the private Facebook group of um, Project 2020 and I tweeted it. And I said, here are four different options. Internet, you guys decide what's going to be on the bottom of the Don Mattingly card that I'm doing. And this one was the winner. So in that case, uh, you chose what color I used. And that will probably be the case a bunch of times moving forward as well. So with the Jackie card, as far as the red, it was a red background color to begin with. And so I used red, but I just did, you know, like I mentioned, like what I'm bringing of kind of a sloppy edge might not be the most eloquent way to say it, but I don't care. It's a, it's a sloppy edge, painting shit, making hot plates, which is a shout out mostly to people that were on the live stream last night. All right, let's see here. Um, did you collect NBA cards? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, the Michael Jordan, some Scottie Pippen, Shaquille O'Neal cards. And I have those. Those are at my parents' house. I gotta, I gotta go find them. Because maybe there's something good in there. Especially with the last dance trending. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's something good. Danny, what's a cassette? That's cute. Uh, Eric, thank you. Jimmy makes sense. Manly's headshot in the background. Original RC, RC's orange. Yep. Uh, have you looked ahead much? Any card uh, seem more of a challenge than any other? Yes. So Hall of Fame pullers. I'm going to go show you one that's coming up for me that will be a challenge. But I also have an idea for it. I'm going to grab it. So it's a good coincidence because this one was released with me today. Also, like tops, so for these card for the cards, tops gives me eight of each of the twenty. That is on a hundred and thirty point blank on the back. The card on the front. These are gonna be super rare. And no, I will not sell them to you. So and I won't give them to you either. I'm gonna keep them for a while. I might splatter paint on them. I'm gonna do whatever I feel like. Anyways, this card. That's gonna be a challenge. Because I think that um, me personally as a portrait artist in the sports world, my strength is capturing these like very epic, you know, 
I won or hitting the fucking grand slam or fucking throwing the touchdown pass and like leaning up against a teal wall looking dope but chill is not necessarily the type of thing that I feel like is my strength of painting but I do have a cool idea and I will tell you guys I haven't told anyone this I like that like sometimes I'll just I like to tell the live streams the the secrets of the upcoming shit. Okay. You guys see his shirt? So do you see how his shirt has this like, um, I don't know, it's a pattern. It looks like he's got a bunch of croissants on his shirt. I don't know what the fuck it actually is, but it looks like a bunch of croissants. Anyways, there is a pretty famous picture of an artist named Frida Kahlo. And if you're just a card collector and don't follow art, you won't know who that is and that's okay. But she was a Mexican painter, very, very famous. And if she was married to Diego Rivera, she's got work in like all the top museums, her shit's tight as fuck. Anyways, she has this self portrait where she painted herself and then in the background, it's like all green, but there's like this pattern, and I don't even know what is in the pattern, but it's some some type of pattern, and she put herself on top of it, and she's wearing some frilly shit, and it's a really cool thing. Um, I'm basically gonna recreate that, is my plan, with this dude's shirt, with all these croissants, so like, the whole background is going to be this kind of teal blue color all the way down. Croissant, 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 croissant. It's not a croissant, but whatever it is, like, you know, bam, 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 bam. And then I'm going to put him like, like a glamour shot. So this is going to be like zoomed in. So it's going to be like that, but it's, it's going to be vertical. So it's going to be more like that, I guess. It's going to be him on the card on top of it. So it's going to be like an homage to Frida and staying true to the card, same colors. I mean, I just don't think that those khakis need to make it into the next version of this card. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, she has a movie. Yes, she has many movies. Um, yeah, Frida Kahlo is a fucking boss. And um, I, don't, I don't think I had a giant painting of her. Um, actually I had two giant paintings of her and one of them sold and one of them is like boxed up and out of the way so I can't can't show you guys right now otherwise I would but her work is super tight uh, Selma tight yep Frida love her work great uh, nachos okay nachos maybe instead of croissants sure Sandman's There's a major delay from the questions you answer and the questions you skip. Yeah. So there's like, um, there's a pretty big delay from when your guys' comments show up over here to me, for me, to when I read them out loud and then you see them. There's like, like you said, pretty, pretty big delay. I think it's like at least 30 seconds. Might be longer than that, which seems like an eternity. If you're like, hey, what's your favorite color? And then it's like crickets for 30 seconds. And then 30 seconds later, I'm like, red. You're like, what? Anyways, that's fine. So I'm, I'm trying to like keep up with them. But it's also fun because like I'll read, a, I'll read a comment. And then I'll go on a tangent about it. Like the Frida stuff for a while. And then like by the time I finish and I look back at the comments, there's actually like relevant comments about the thing that I just started talking about. Or stopped talking about. Okay, Jimmy says, do a Dali, have the croissants melting off his shirt like clocks. Not a bad idea. Uh, I love Dali. I've got, I've done a few paintings of him. So like a lot of my favorite artists I'll do portraits of. I've done a few Fridas. I've done a bunch of Basquiat's, who's my favorite artist. Warhol, uh, got a handful of those. Um, and yeah, did a couple Dali's, which is also cool. 
Uh, so no Jackie from State Farm Influence. Poor khakis. Yeah, or no, not Jackie from State Farm. Jake from State Farm. Yeah, no, I don't think we're going to do Jake from State Farm um, into it. Although I do like pulling like current pop culture into the Tops 2020 project. I've been thinking about like, I want to pay tribute to the original cards. I also want to bring in some of this 21st century shit. So if there's some cool emojis I could drop into a card, I'm not opposed to the idea. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, yeah, always wanted to be in Yankee Stadium when Mariano came on to uh, Metallica's Enter Sandman, which is one of the best songs ever. Side note. Um, I'm waiting for someone to do a mobster looking Rivera or a Jeter I feel is coming. Okay, good to know. Black and white with a suit, tight. Khaki's got to go, yep, baby shark. Yep. Nice. Yep. All right. Well, tonight I was thinking about. I was originally. Never ever. Nothing ever goes according to plan. Um, I was planning on live streaming for like thirty minutes, and doing some graphic design and showing you guys like a screen share while I make a Jackie Robinson stencil separate from the card partially because I want to plug my Jackie Robinson card that's live right now also because from a practical standpoint if I could sell a different Jackie Robinson painting uh, tomorrow on my website that would be an alternate source of income and not step on my contact with contract with tops but also because Jackie was like thrown in my lap I haven't contacted his estate and his charity and everyone's like um, everything that I need to do to like legally be able to do what I want to do so uh, instead I spent an hour chit chatting about uh, everything which is great I think it's fun like th these kind of live streams I want to like make sure that like everyone knows that it's just it's whatever I do that night. It's not not always going to be planned. It's going to be sometimes going to be splatter painting. Sometimes going to be painting a, you know, Mike Trout, which by the way, one stream, today's Wednesday. So in the next three days, I don't know what day it's going to be. One of those days at 10.23 p.m., I'm going to show up and I'm going to paint Mike Trout. Because that is the next card that I have not finished that's due to tops. And I need to do it soon. So that's coming up. And sometimes it'll be that. Sometimes uh, it'll be breaking a box of cards. Like I had so much fun breaking those heritage boxes. That's why I was trying to really buy those Bowman packs today. Because if I could have got the max, you know, if I could have got 24 Bowman packs, doing a break would be super fun with you guys. Um... Every day is going to be different. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Uh, how did I get into art? That's a long story, I guess. I've always been into art. My family's super creative and always encouraged me to do it. I've always enjoyed doing it. But before I went to college, I decided, or I, I um, convinced myself that it wasn't like a, a career. And instead, I was going to do something like responsible. And so I studied economics and, and went into business. Business. Uh, did digital marketing for a very long time. And then on my 30th birthday, I decided, fuck this. Life's too short. I want to do what I love. And so I quit to paint full time. And I'm 35 now. So that was five years ago. And it's, I mean, it, I don't know. On one hand... I think that there's a lot more that I could do business-wise to grow, you know, my art business. But on the other other hand, you know, looking at like doing something for five years and now working with one of the titans in the industry, being tops uh, for sports sports industry, is like it's, it's crazy. It's very humbling. Uh, might want to open some more tabs. Oh man. I have so many fucking tabs. 
Yeah, you see the you see the three blowout tabs. Those are all, those are there all the time. By the way, I've got my the two different um, Project Twenty Twenty related ones, and then one for private messages. Uh, what are the rules of art? Can you just paint anybody, or do you have to get permission? Great question. So that depends. A lot of what I do artistically is a one of one painting of an athlete for that athlete. So if I'm painting Steph Curry and I'm painting it for Steph Curry, I don't have to worry about going to the NBA and saying, hey, can I get a license to do this? Because I'm not mass producing it and Steph wants it and that's him and it's him. So in that case, there's not really a lot that I need to do. But with tops, if I'm painting Jackie Robinson and there's going to be, I don't know, 7,000 of them printed. I know that's an ambitious print run for a card that dropped on the same day as Bowman when the site crashed. But fuck all that shit. There's some print run. That's completely different where like Tops needs a license and they get that. They go and pay a lot of money for that license, which is also why they sell the card for $20 and I make $2, which is fine. Everyone wins. They deal with all the bullshit. Um, I deal with uh, making the art and then hearing everyone else complain about Tops' bullshit about the site today. That's just like a limited. Anyway, hopefully they answer this question. Okay, let's see. Uh, I seen a screenshot of someone getting 11 orders of 24 of them Bowman packs gonna see what top says yeah I don't know damn good decision I assume you're talking about me uh, transitioning to art and thank you I think it's um it's been fucking great I love it uh, always wonder the supplies you use as a creator um, do you have to buy all of them paint canvas etc they must be costly. Yes. I have to paint. I have to paint. I have to buy all of them and they are extremely costly. So I know that um, I live in one of the most expensive cities in the world, but this, this, uh, this room you see here, which is very cool, but uh, you know, just one room. So I mean, just the studio alone, $2,500 a month rent. That's on top of what I pay in Manhattan for my apartment, for my studio, and I won't even get into that, but that's 2500 bucks. Then, you know, canvases, paints, uh, electricity, shipping art, uh, Photoshop, you know, all the digital stuff, subscriptions like it's it's a lot man um, it's crazy I have a much higher overhead doing this compared to like anything else like when I worked in marketing it was it was a job a cubicle nine to five showed up clocked in blah 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 if I had to like travel for business for example uh, or go to like a conference or a meeting, I could expense that to the company and say, hey, I spent this much on a hotel and I spent this much on my meals during um, during the business trip. This is totally different, man. I mean, straight out of pocket, $7,000 a month is just, if I make $7,000 a month, I'm breaking even. Like I pay all my bills and then I'm just like, okay, well, got zero dollars in my bank account which is fucking crazy uh, yeah so I've never had something like that where like you think about it, like multiply that times a fucking year like that is a salary for someone else and that's just what it costs me to do what I do and part of it is because I live in a very expensive city I don't have to live in New York I love to I love being here I don't have to do that um, part of you know takes money to make money maybe kind of thing it's also challenging and like this like during the covid stuff where not as many people are buying art uh, that that makes it hard but also with the tops thing 
uh, that's been helping offset and like, I mean, shit, if I didn't have tops, I, I don't know. I don't know how I would do continue right now. So what else we got? Um, top food said terrible. Yep. Well, we went over that. It's pretty tough today. Uh, too cool. How you doing with Noah? Boomer, what's up? Oh man. I wish Noah was here too. I had um I started putting together Noah's package and uh it was a very emotional experience today. It was fun. Um it was fun but hard. Uh, I feel for the kid and I really am rooting for him. So I'm gonna send you send you a bunch of stuff. I I'm excited to I'll send you like the video. I actually put a video together earlier, and for other people that don't know what's going on, uh, Boomer just—I don't know if he just joined, but Boomer is on the chat. His son Noah, aspiring artist, he asked me to send him a little um, maybe care package and some words of um, encouragement. And so today I started putting together just some different art supplies, and cards, and. Uh, and writing a letter to him, which is going to be really cool. Yeah. Uh, Eric, can you get sponsored? Yes, I can get sponsored. Uh, I actually, I've had sponsors in the past for certain things. Um, not for like the high ticket items. So like, you know, I'll have like little sponsors that will give me some things. I actually just, one of the, one of the very more exciting things lately in terms of sponsors is 3M they make all the masks that I wear and the filters and they make the tape that I use they make a bunch of stuff a pretty high up person at 3M saw a feature of mine I was in uh, lacrosse US lacrosse magazine I played lacrosse in college and his son is playing lacrosse so he like saw this like artist he hit me up on LinkedIn and like I think that like a 3M sponsorship could be in the works which would be sick because that is like a big expense for me but there's so much stuff like you know the paint itself could be great canvases are one of the most expensive things it's really hard to get sponsored by like a, a company that makes canvases it's not impossible it's just um it's challenging uh let's see in my crazy expensive very inspiring yep grew up in brooklyn too yeah, so I'm in Long Island City, so not too far from Brooklyn at all. Um, what's up, P-Hack? Welcome to the party. Sorry that you were late. Uh, it's been mostly just me sitting here talking just like this. Uh, a little different than I anticipated, but that's the fun thing. Like, every night, like, this is going to be literally every night thing, 24-7, 365. Um, I've got, like, a road trip planned in the semi near future and I'm already thinking like fuck it I'm gonna be on the road I'm gonna pull out my phone and at 1023 we're gonna stream and it's gonna be sick um, and just waiting till things cool down so that I can actually do the road trip but that's about it uh, would love to see Clement be painted uh, or Clemente I don't know if it's Clemente or Clemente I always feel bad he was before my time so I just I don't know anyways he is gonna be painted by me and that will happen um, let's see what else we got. Born in Park Slope. Okay, you guys are just chit chatting. Great. Uh, recommend his time lapse videos. They're cool. Thank you so much, Boomer. Yeah, so I have a bunch of time lapse videos here on my YouTube channel that I had sent to him and Noah earlier. This back page. I love it. Grew up in Bensworth. Tight. All right. Well, here's what I'm thinking, guys. It's been a little over an hour. It's awesome. This was part two of an infinite series, so still exciting. I just doubled the amount of live stream at 1023 videos that I did, and that to me is important. So thank you guys. Also check out this uh, this dope anti-quarantine quarantine club shirt. So I'm going to call it for tonight, but I love you guys so much for coming in. Um, thank you guys for everyone that asked questions. If you guys you know, want to figure out... Um, if you want to try, if you want to support my art, tops.com right now is a good way to do it with my Jackie card. The top site sucks, 
Um, it sucks a lot right now with the Bowman release, so like, hopefully you guys can add it to the cart and buy it. If you do, I'm happy to sign it. If uh, also, actually, even outside of that, like even more important to me would be like subscriptions on YouTube. I really want to grow my YouTube channel. I'm very, although I have like a hundred videos on YouTube, it's all just been like, it's posted and I forget about it. I've never been like really engaged. So like subscribing would mean a lot because I want to grow that subscriber count and start to do these, um, start to grow these uh, live streams. I'm gonna live stream every single night, ten, starting at 10.23 Eastern PM. And we're just gonna uh, roll with that. Anyways, I'm out guys. I love you.